Hello, I'm Leanne George, coordinator of the SPEC survey program at the Association of Research Libraries, and I would like to thank you for joining us for this SPEC survey webcast. Today we'll hear about the results of the survey on data curation. And these results have been published in SPEC Kit 355, which is freely available on the website. Uh, before we begin, there are just a couple announcements. Uh, first, Everyone but the presenters has been muted to cut down on background noise. So if you are part of a, a group today watching the webcast, please feel free to speak among yourselves. Um, you won't disturb the presentation. Uh, but we do want you to join the conversation by typing questions in the chat box that you'll see in the lower left corner of your screen. At the end of the presentation, I'll read the questions aloud, and then our presenters will answer them for you. The webcast is being recorded, and we'll send all registrants the slides and a link to the recording um, in the next week. Now, let me introduce our presenters. Heidi Imker is the Director of the Research Data Service at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Cynthia Hudson Vitali is the Data Services Coordinator in Data and GIS Services at Washington University in St. Louis Libraries. Bob Ohlendorf is Science Data Librarian at Penn State University. Lisa Johnston is the Research Data Management Curation Lead at the University of Minnesota Twin Cities Libraries. Jake Carlson is the Research Data Services Manager at the University of Michigan Library. Claire Stewart is Associate University Librarian for Research and Learning at the University of Minnesota. And Wendy Kozlowski is Data Curation Specialist at Cornell University. So you'll use this hashtag ARLSpecKit354 to continue the conversation with them on Twitter. And now let me turn the presentation over to Lisa. Thanks, Leanne. Um, hi, everybody. This is Lisa Johnston, and I'm going to take the lead for uh, the presentation section of our webcast today. And then my uh, co-authors are on the line, ready to jump in when we move into the Q&A. So um, first, with this survey, we focused on data curation, uh, which can be broadly defined as the act of ongoing management of data throughout its life cycle of interest and usefulness to scholarly educational activities. Curation activities uh, for data might include quality assurance, file integrity checks, documentation review, metadata creation, file format transformations, rights management, and the list goes on. It's important to note that data curation services may be provided with or without a local data repository. So your library might support researchers when preparing their data for deposit into an external data repository or a disciplinary data repository. Um, data can or data curation can also be viewed as a subset of a broader suite of research data management services, and there have been a number of studies, and in fact, uh, spec hit on the, that broader topic of research data management services that include data management plan support or training researchers in data management best practices and other cons consultative roles. But what we specifically wanted to understand with this survey is how libraries are taking a more hands-on approach uh, to curating research data. So with our demographics, um, we sent out the spec kit survey in January of 2017. It went out to all 124 ARL institutions, and 80 institutions completed the survey with a response rate of about 65%. Um, the goals of this survey uh, were uh, threefold. We really wanted to get a picture of the current staffing and policy and technical infrastructure in place at the ARL member institutions for data curation. We wanted to know the current levels of demand for these services. And we wanted to understand any challenges that those institutions face regarding providing these data curation services. We did have a secondary goal, however. Um, we also wanted to uh, begin to establish a community of practice for data curators. Uh, the authors of the survey are also collaborating on the Data Curation Network Project. Uh, this is a project uh, that is funded by the Sloan Foundation, 
uh, to develop a cross-institutional staffing model uh, that will help account for the wide range of data types, formats, and other disciplinary aspects of curating research data. So we really hoped this survey would also help us better understand the landscape of data curation activities and the staff that are currently doing this work. Uh, we do have um, a, an open data set for all of the survey data available on our website and are definitely welcoming opportunities to collaborate uh, with others on additional analyses of these results. So with the first question, uh, we actually branched the survey um, between those who indicated yes, their institution were currently providing data curation services. So these are our current providers. And 51 uh, of the institutions who responded fell into that category. Uh, those that responded to this question with no or were in the process uh, were actually branched to a separate part of the survey and asked to rank the importance of various data curation activities. And, and this portion of the survey is actually interoperable with a data set that we collected from 91 researchers uh, last fall. So we're actually able to compare uh, the, the rankings of importance for data curation activities between a librarian group and a researcher group. Um, interestingly, only 20% of our sample, uh, 16 libraries, indicated that they did not uh, provide nor were actively developing data curation services. Um, so today, what we're going to focus on are the yes uh, category here. So those that did say uh, they were current providers of, of data curation services. So of those current providers, uh, we found that data curation services appear to be a relatively recent initiative. More than half of the libraries uh, that currently provide services started doing so in 2010 or later. Um, the 51 responses to this question on the source of the greatest demand for data curation services also uh, showed interest from researchers all across a variety of subject domains. Um, life sciences and social sciences, you'll see here, are topping the list. Um, but also, maybe perhaps surprisingly, given the fact that STEM receives so much attention in discussing data issues, we also heard that the arts and humanities um, was uh, seeking data curation services from, from these libraries and actually edged out both engineering and the applied sciences as well as the physical sciences. Um, interest in data curation services does not yet, however, appear to have translated into strong staffing levels. Uh, our survey asked how many staff focus either 100% of their time or a portion of their time on providing data curation services. And the responses showed that a majority of libraries that uh, we heard responses from place responsibility for data curation on a few individuals who also have other duties to carry out. So they are, they are partially dedicated to providing these services. Looking closer, um, we found that most of our current providers uh, for data curation services also have a repository service for data. So these data repositories uh, can be self-deposit repositories, mediated deposit, or a combination of both. Uh, many limit the upload file sizes of the, the files uh, associated with the data set with an average reported about 2.5 gigabytes per file. More than half of, of the current providers also assist with deposits to external data repositories. And some that were often mentioned were ICPSR, Figshare, and the Open Science Framework. Uh, looking closer at that pie chart, breaking it down a little bit more, um, we asked about the type of data repository service. And the majority of those, um, 29 institutions, have an institutional repository that accepts data. Uh, smaller numbers um, had a standalone repository that was specifically built for data or some other often combination of, of services. So um, we also asked what platforms uh, the, the institutions were using, and DSpace was the most common repository platform uh, being used by 22 of the reporting institutions. Um, but also uh, 11 institutions use Dataverse, either as a hosted or a local installation. Ten use uh, Fedora Hydro, and seven uh, use Islandora. Other platforms uh, were also uh, very common and indicated in our survey results. 
They included uh, BPress Digital Commons, CCAN, RSTAR, Databrary, um, other custom Ruby on Rails applications, Hub Zero, Sobex CM, and then hybrid combinations of a variety of all of these other platforms. The relatively nascent nature of, of data curation services and treatments that we saw across the ARL institutional landscape um, is also displayed in the number of data sets uh, that we are seeing in the repository services. So even though the Office of Science and Technology Policy memo, uh, which really asked all the federal funders to um, come up with plans to, to make sure that data can be shared and released with the public, this happened in 2013. But we're now only really seeing the technical and human curation infrastructure uh, to reach the point of accepting and curating data sets today in 2017. So of the 46 libraries that um, do accept data, uh, they're only receiving approximately one new data set a month. Uh, we did see three institutions receiving more than 10 data sets a month. Um, similarly, you'll see this trend uh, with uh, the number of data sets total in the repository where most institutions had fewer than 50 data sets in their entire collection. Um, 10 libraries did have between 51 and 200 data sets, uh, and then seven reported having over 200 in their data repository. Describing data sets using uh, standard metadata schemas is, is really important for data discovery, dissemination, and reuse. Um, we do have, however, many schemas to choose from. Uh, they may be discipline specific or institutional specific. Um, so we, the current providers, those that we asked this question to, indicated about six major metadata schemas uh, in use. Those will be Dublin Core, which you'll see is the, the highest proportion here, um, but also MODS, DDI, uh, Datasite, and Dataverse, uh, which is actually based on a number of standards. Um, and then other institutions, uh, the other category also employed things such as uh, Geo Blacklight, MARC, um, BRA Core 4, or custom metadata standard. Um, additionally, I should note that many organizations indicated they use more than one schema for different purposes. So um, in fact, a few institutions said they used up to four different metadata schemas. So curating sensitive data is, is also a topic that we wanted to understand um, for our population. Uh, fewer than half of the current providers uh, indicated that they uh, support uh, curating services for private or sensitive data. Um, one of our uh, respondents actually explained how that process for curating data is just not uh, an easy thing to do. Um, they explained how they had to go through a lot of institutional uh, collaboration groups and, and working with places like the IRB, understanding a variety of different types of sensitive data file formats, and working with um, research quality assurance in their campus to ensure that they are actually in compliance to do so. Another key component of uh, the data curation lifecycle that we wanted to address was data preservation. So preservation services such as emulation, file audits, migration, secure storage, and succession planning, um, these all help ensure that the, the data and the repository technology is, is usable and stable over the long term. Um, in our uh, findings, we saw that the most common preservation compliant metadata standard uh, used were MOZ and PREMIS, um, but there was little standardization across institutions in, the, in ways of providing backup services where many were employing tape systems and cloud services to ensure redundant copies of the data. All right, turning to the next section of our uh, survey, we, we wanted to understand how the variety of data curation activities um, were being offered in, in ARL institutions. So our survey asked respondents who, who indicated they were current providers to indicate whether their service um, provides any one of these 47 data curation activities uh, that we grouped into five different aspects of data curation, ingest activities, appraisal activities, processing and review activities, access activities, and preservation activities. 
Um, if an activity was not uh, currently included as part of their service, we ask them if they plan to or aspire to include that activity in the future. So here are some of those results. Um, the most universally provided uh, data curation services were the ingest activities. So these activities included um, things like creating metadata, uh, collecting deposit agreements, authenticating uh, the depositor, are they who they say they are, um, accepting documentation and association with uh, the data set, uh, validating the file formats, and preserving the chain of custody. Um, we saw that 92% uh, of our current providers provided one or more of these services, and all but chain of custody uh, were offered by more than two-thirds of the current providers. The access category uh, covers these 11 activities that were likewise commonly supported. Uh, these curation activities uh, in the access category um, had noticeably uniform levels of support for data sets and we think it might be because it's frequently a function of uh, existing repository technology solutions. So these are already built-in aspects of repository technologies. Um, so we saw that 43 libraries out of our, our current providers were currently providing one or more of these access services. Um, however, only 14 of the current providers um, actually provided data visualization services. So that one definitely fell down on the, the lower end of the spectrum. Um, many, uh, most of the responding libraries provide support uh, for the 18 processing and review activities, um, but we saw a, an interesting bimodal distribution of these results. So uh, there were activities that were currently supported, and then there were activities that respondents would like to provide but are unable to at this time. And um, one of the, the comments we had kind of summed this up, that you know, they're slowly working toward supporting these activities, but many are still going to be out of their reach. And actually, peer review was, was highlighted in several of the comments as something that may be out of reach or out of scope for the ARL institution libraries to, to support. Um, and you can see this on this next slide, the rest of the uh, processing and review activities, um, where, you know, you'll see that, that similar um, bimodal distribution of those results. Preservation activities um, came with a noticeably uniform level of support for data sets because also we, we found that these were uh, a function of the repository technology in many cases. Um, as, as one of these comments point out, some of these activities are dependent on infrastructures provided by departments outside the libraries. So that was also uh, a theme amongst our comments of where the level of support was coming from, whether or not it was in the library or outside. And then the appraisal activities uh, around risk management, uh, rights management, and selection. Um, uh, we, we saw a number of comments here that um, echoed that idea. Is this the, the role of the library, or is something like risk management um, really the responsibility of the depositor? So as you can see, um, our conclusions around these divergence of, of what roles we support and what roles we aspire to support um, are, are kind of falling in these two categories. So a number of data curation activities uh, were falling in this category where libraries would like to perform them um, but were unable to at this time. And, and some of those that rose to the top included repository certification, software, uh, creating a software registry, or providing interoperability uh, for, for data sets within their um, collection. Um, however, we also found that a number of data curation activities uh, were activities that libraries had no interest in, in providing. Uh, and it should be noted that several of these uh, activities were um, found to be highly valued uh, by researchers um, in some of the, the previous research done by the authors of the spec kit uh, for the Data Curation Network project. So some of these activities like code review, um, peer review, um, <laughs> software registries showed up in both categories, and de-identification um, should not be uh, necessarily abandoned, but like this quote says, is it something that the library ne needs to do or should do, um, or do we need to be asking who to partner with um, and, and able to partner and, and connect researchers to some of these other services. So finally, we asked, 
Um, what are the challenges, or what is the, the level of, of challenge that libraries face um, when providing data curation services? And you'll see here the majority of uh, the, the types of um, ways to provide data curation services, potential challenges, um, were all very much very challenging. Um, and expertise in curating uh, domain data was actually one of the most challenging uh, that, or, uh, sorry, it's one of the, the areas that most of our libraries found challenging. So, um, and that, that makes a lot of sense to us, uh, and, and particularly when you're thinking about the type of uh, multidisciplinary data sets that must be coming to all of our ARL institutions, um, how do we effectively curate this wide range of data file formats and data types? Uh, it's a really great reminder for us of um, why it might be a good idea to pool our expertise. In, in a data curation network so that the specific types of data might be curated um, by experts that could be either locally or at another institution. So with that, um, I'll just briefly mention our conclusions uh, in this study. And, and we kind of are seeing growth in, in data curation services, but perhaps not yet maturity uh, in the aerial institution support. Uh, what we saw were uh, a few institutions that um, did have uh, really well-operated, long-standing repositories uh, that, sh that showed a high level of sophistication with the type of data curation services they were providing. Uh, the larger subset uh, were uh, respondents that uh, recently took, sh took steps to launch their, their curation services, um, either through an established IR or through a standalone data repository. Um, and then a smaller group of our server respondents have established maybe some core research data services, uh, perhaps you know, training researches and best practices on data management or DMP reviews, um, but have not yet embarked on uh, actual data curation activities or uh, applying more hands-on approaches for um, cur uh, curating data. So with that, that is, uh, I believe, the rundown of my slides for today. And now what we'd really love to do is open up the conversation to questions. And I will uh, welcome all of my co-presenters to unmute themselves, and we'd be happy to um, talk more about these findings. So please do join the conversation by typing your questions in the chat box in the lower left corner of your screen, and um, I'll read the questions as they come in. Uh, we do have a question from Amanda who's said, um, you reported that the median number of data sets uh, curated is 39. Is that because of the labor that's required or just the number of submissions? So uh, can everybody hear me? Yep. OK. I, I, actually, I think those two things feed into each other because if you, you know, um, as Lisa said earlier too, the, the number of uh, a lot of uh, libraries are only getting maybe one data set a month. So there's an issue with flux in terms of not as many data sets are coming in. So then there's no, um, no commitment to, to adding staff in order to do the curation. But on the other hand, if you don't have staff to do the curation, then you can't do it. So we have this kind of circular problem of um, those two things feeding into each other. and other opinions offered. <laughs> Welcome. Hi, this is Rob. Um, I, I, I feel like ours is more of the rate of submission at this point, um, but it could easily become saturated so that curation becomes a bottleneck, I think, as well. This is Jake. And I think one of the challenges we had with, with this survey, with any survey, is that uh, we could see the responses as to you know, what people told us, but we didn't necessarily know why they were telling us what they told us. So I think Heidi and, and Rob are, are spot on in terms of it's, it's sort of a chicken or the egg type problem, but I don't know that we can confirm that based on the results of this survey alone. So that, that's probably a question that would bear some more, um, more research. Uh, Melissa has a question. Did anyone mention having a data catalog, um, but not uh, necessarily an uh, institutional repository? I, 
I don't recall any mentions of catalogs. Does anybody else? That would probably be the kind of thing that would have come up in a comment maybe. Um, no, I didn't hear anything about a catalog either. But that's, that's a really good question because I know some institutions do have those, um, like yeah. a, essentially an index of data that's available on campus, but, but not necessarily housing them locally. So yeah, yeah. It, it wasn't mentioned. Um, there's kind of a related question from Carrie. Uh, did you get any sense that the libraries who um, participate are keeping tabs on data sets that aren't going to the library, but might be deposited directly into some other repository like Dryad or GenBank? We did ask a question about whether libraries um, were willing to curate data sets um, on behalf of researchers who would be submitting to a, you know, an outside repository. And I don't remember the numbers off the top of my head, but you know, several, of them in, several of them indicated yes. Um, but nobody mentioned that I can recall of actually um, whether or not they were involved in the process if they were trying to track things um, you know, sort of on their own to keep an eye on it. Um, John has a question of, uh, did you ask if institutions have a data librarian? Um, because you, you were asking uh, about staff members' work responsibilities. I can jump in on that. Uh, oh, go ahead, Rob. Oh. Oh. Uh, I would, I, I think the survey, and the, it got a little confusing sometime, I think, for the respondents, but the survey was directed at curatorial staff. So in the text, it looked like some people were including data librarians, but other people weren't. And so I think, I think you're pointing out something that we really can't get a hold of in, in the survey. Um, Lisa, did you want to add to that? No, no, that, that's great. Thanks, Rob. Uh, Carlin, oh, go ahead. Sorry, just uh, some of the comments that were provided on pages 18 and 19 of the survey about exactly how data um, responsibilities are divided are pretty interesting and might give some hints that would give um, some context to that question. Yeah, and we definitely did see, um, I, and I think this was one of the earlier slides too, is that there is definitely a lot of um, you know, fractional support um, um, for staff. Uh, Carlin asked about the slide with the bar graph that showed how many respondents have staff devoted exclusively to data curation. Um, the, the bar appeared to be higher for exclusive, but but the speaker said most of them were working on it on part of their duties. Um, if you want to go back to that slide and bring it back up on the screen. Yeah, I, I think the y or the x axis on the bottom is um, more toward yeah. So if you look at the number of so most the number of staff only having one. So that's and in, in or institutions of. Um, 12 have that, but if you go farther down, like there's less and less. So you, you can see that there's a partial support is actually a greater, uh, I'm not explaining this very well, sorry. Um, there's a greater um, variability in having, having a, a fractional number of staff. Hopefully that explained that. Um, so like if there's an N of, yeah, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, go, go on. Continue. I was just going to say, so for an N of 49, 30, 30, only 13 had you know, one that was fully dedicated, right? And then only two had one that was, or then only two staff dedicated. Um, did you ask anything about funder enforcement of uh, data management plans? No, our survey was focused exclusively on data curation services, so we really did not venture over into uh, the DMP and other, other ways that libraries uh, can provide research data services. 
We also really didn't touch much on the rationale behind providing data curation services. I can see that potentially being one of them of trying to set aside funder mandates and giving researchers a way to, to do that, but we did not ask that question directly. Uh, did you ask about ownership of the data, uh, whether the researcher owns it or the institution owns it? No. Um, we didn't get into ownership. Um, Joyce asks, what were the most common partnerships provided? Was it IT or the Office of Research or, or some other part of the institution? That's a good question. We might be able to extract that from the comments, but it wasn't a specific question that was sort of addressed, or that was addressed in the in the survey. It was um, primarily uh, focused on uh, specific activities that people were undertaking to curate their their data, unless uh, along collaborations, if I'm remembering correctly. Do you, does this data give you any sense of what percentage of data sets were stored institutionally and uh, replicated in a disciplinary repository? This is Wendy. I do, we, again, we didn't specifically ask um, that question. We did get feedback from people that they supported data sets. In some cases, they supported curation of data sets that were in disciplinary repositories, but we um, didn't get any specific numbers on that. I think that's a really interesting question because um, that's not like the, the curation processes are necessarily different. Um, so I don't know the impact on workflows, but we didn't specifically get an answer to that question either. Uh, there's a, a question about um, whether institutional archives or archivists are involved in data curation. Um, I don't think you specifically asked that either. Would, would you suggest they look at the responses on, to question four on staff responsibilities or Yes, I, I would definitely recommend that. We, we did allow um, everyone to free text enter the, the who, who was involved, you know, which staff members were involved with data curation. So that definitely could be pulled out. But no, we don't have the numbers right now. Uh -huh. And um, did you ask about how libraries are recruiting people who have the expertise to do this kind of new kind of curation work? <laughs> no, we did not ask that either, but I, I have a feeling we have a whole new survey right now just through the questions yeah. and comments. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we did ask it was for, highlighted as... Oh, sorry. sorry I was go just going to say, we did ask for some examples of job descriptions, and mm -hmm. um, there weren't many actually submitted, so about uh, just, a, just a handful, really. Um, but recruitment was not, was not discussed. I'm sorry, Heidi, what were you going to add? I was just going to say in one of in the um, challenges section, it was definitely recruiting and retaining people was definitely something that um, was a high concern or high ch high area um, of challenges for people. And I do remember a comment where somebody put in something to, something to the effect of it took us two years to hire somebody and then they left. So I, I think retaining people is is also um, been really challenging for some people. Yeah, I think um, you know the situation and the, and the survey results that we saw really speak to kind of an emerging area for libraries, and the fact that we still have you know so many questions um, that we, we weren't able to cover in the survey because there really are so many things that we're interested in further exploring really speaks to I think the stage where we're at, and we're trying to to figure this all out and figure out a direction to move forward um, in libraries collectively. Uh, David asks. Um, a question about those institutions who aren't providing data curation services. Um, wonders, is it likely that curation is handled somewhere else in the institution, 
or there's little need for it? Do you get any sense from the um, comments from those respondents about why not? I mean, we didn't get any comments that were just like, no, we don't have to do this because somebody else is doing it. Um, I, at least I don't recall any. So I think it, I think it, it might, it's an open question, but if, if it is happening, I'm not sure that the, our respondents knew um, that it was happening elsewhere. We did uh, take our, a look. Oh, sorry, Rob, go ahead. Okay, our institution just, we started curating the data just this year. Uh, previously, we accepted the data without curation, and it just never got curated. And that turned out to be a big problem for us. Yeah, my, my, gut, my gut, gut reaction is probably it's just not happening, but um, I don't have uh, an actual um, data-driven reason to believe that. And we, Cynthia and I did take a look at some of the free text responses to the, those questions that were answered by those who didn't necessarily provide curation services, and we um, kind of categorized those into the reasons that were given in the free text answers as to why they didn't provide services, not necessarily if they were being provided elsewhere, but one of the reasons was, was that they didn't necessarily feel that that was a, um, the job of the library, and Lisa mentioned that in the slide. So um, that reason, which we categorized as like, responsibility, whose responsibility is it to do curation, and whether or not it was a scalable activity within the library were the two top reasons that were given for why people didn't do the bulk of the um, curation activities. And that doesn't address where it's being done, but that potentially it shouldn't be being done in the library. Uh, Kristen has a, a question of um, libraries that are doing data curation versus those who are doing data management services. Uh, I, I know you were really trying to separate those types of activities out, but from the responses, could you get a sense for who's doing each of those types of services or, or both? Um, this is Lisa. I can respond to that. Uh, we, we did not address that in this particular survey. Um, however, uh, Ina Cooper and, and several other librarians uh, did actually do an interesting study of ARL institutions um, by reviewing uh, the websites of, of the libraries to identify what services were being offered and were able to categorize um, the different uh, levels of support for data management services, data curation services, data visualization services, et cetera. Um, so that, that study I, I would point you to uh, to get a better picture of uh, how that breaks down for, for ARL. There are a couple of uh, two related questions about libraries working with the researchers. Um, one is, did, did they work with them on how best to structure their data before submitting the data set? And the related question is, did you get a sense that faculty are reluctant to plan ahead for depositing large data sets? Again, um, I, we didn't ask it, that. I don't recall that coming up specifically, um, but I think the answer is yes. <laughs> Lisa, it's I'm a little difficult to say based on the survey results, given that we were surveying librarians. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it would yeah. be a bit of an extrapolation to, to make that yeah. conclusion based on the survey results. Yeah. But I think there's, there's other you know, research that's been done that would indicate, yeah, that in fact is, is likely a, a scenario. And I think among the authors, we've you know, discussed this you know, a bit informally, and certainly planning ahead is not researchers' strong suit all the time. Um, there's a question uh, related to the recent Nature editorial um, and this study. Uh, should libraries continue to invest staff and budget into data curation services? Are you familiar enough with that editorial to respond to the question? Is this the empty rhetoric? 
editorial, it's a little hard to tell from the description of what that's referring to. In, in Nature Magazine? Um, I think she's referring to the editorial that came out on June 12th that uh, says that uh, placing your data in institutional IR, IR support for data is patchy and um, curation. Uh, I forget exactly what it says. Um, who wants to take this? It's, it's it says something like discourages um, discourages curation and data standards. Interoperability. I think in the next. Something like that. Yeah. yeah Sorry, it, and, but I think it says in the next um, paragraph or sentence something like that that then it points to Figshare, which also doesn't do curation or have data standards as being useful. Um, so, you know, I think. I think there, there is clearly a lot of momentum that's going towards this, right? So there are nature editorials, and there is some pushback um, to the um, medical journals in terms of not being a, a huge enough proponents behind it. I think um, so. It's, it's definitely a space that's growing, and if libraries want to be, you know, in part of that space, and then I, th then I think they would continue to want to invest in, in staff in this area. Um, I personally don't. I, I found the the editorial to be, you know, there's some some truth to different parts of it, but it has to be an evolution. Um, things aren't just going to, you know, suddenly appear that are perfect. And and I think IRs are certainly a part of that. I, I, please, uh, somebody else, you know, chime in with your thoughts on that too. Yeah. I guess I would also add that I don't know that we've done a great job um, as a library community in really articulating why library-based institutional repositories are an important uh, component of, of sharing data and, and making this you know, more actionable in terms of, of scholarship. Um, and I think we have some, some work to do in terms of trying to explain the advantages that we have of, of being you know, sort of neutral in our outlook and of being really funded and provisioned for long-term planning and long-term thinking um, in ways that we haven't done yet. And just to uh, add, Carolyn asked, Go ahead. Um, and I think that the, uh, this is an important point that we wasn't necessarily something we focused on in the survey questions, but it's certainly one of the reasons why we formed the, um, the Data Curation Network project is to um, not necessarily have the conversation just be focused on the repository, the repository platform, but the expertise that's needed to really make that data findable and reusable. And someone on Twitter also pointed out that there's a lot of opportunity here for collaboration between librarians and, and the disciplines. Um, and I think those are all really great things to, to consider as we try to plan a future for this um, bundle of services. Um, several people have asked for links to the reports, the, this editorial, a uh, couple reports you mentioned. We will include those links in the follow-up information we send to the registrants. Um, but I think our, our final question we have time for today is, um, so how can these results be used? Are there any low barrier areas for improvement to these kinds of curation services that libraries can start looking into? Um, this is Lisa. I, I think the results showed us that libraries are actively developing data curation services. We're, we're seeing uh, sort of a middling right now where um, some institutions uh, might be further ahead, um, some institutions might be just starting down this path, uh, but we, we are seeing that evolution. So, so for us, you know, having these results to show um, uh, kind of a, a temperature check of where we're at is going to help us respond to things like uh, that nature editorial that just got linked in the in the comments, um, and and demonstrate that that yes, actually libraries do care a lot about uh, interoperability of data sets and, and the curation of data sets, and we are making this happen. Um, and so that that I think is 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 one of the more uh, exciting findings that, that we have here today is just seeing um, the the progress. Well, thank you all for joining us today to, to discuss the results of this survey. Uh, again, you will receive the slides and a link to the recording uh, within the week, and we will 
uh, get you follow-up information on uh, how to access the reports that have been uh, discussed this afternoon. So join me in thanking our presenters, and I look forward to your participation in our next webcast.